Hello viewers, SuperGT here, welcome back to another video. So today we have another round of the FIA, and uh, it's the manufacturer series, and I think it's round number 7 we're on to now. These, these championships do go by rather quickly, so of course I have chosen Porsche as my manufacturer. And of course I've gone for the, the amazing, you just got passed by a girl, slash Amsterdam livery. Uh, really random, yes, but it's worth about 100 horsepower, so it's worth go worth going for. So, throwing myself into sixth place, had to get that in there early, uh, on my first flying lap. And we are about to come up to here, uh, come up here to start my my last flying lap. So let's see how it goes. This is a lap of the Maggiore circuit, one of the shorter configurations in reverse. So quite an unusual track this. Normally you're racing around this circuit the other way around, but it's a good thing about uh, Maggiore, the fact that there's multiple configurations and both directions, you can both you can go around both ways around the track and it kind of, it's kind of seems normal. You know, most, most tracks would feel a bit strange going backwards. Coming into this chicane, re really do have to maximise track limits here, just about keeping the wheels within the lines, or quite within the limits. Sometimes you can just, just about go beyond the lines on some of those curbs. This is a really difficult corner here, sort of long curved entry and curved exit as well. It makes it a very difficult corner to get right. And they're coming up towards a very sharp left hander here. Kind of difficult to get right because you're just going over crest here. It's difficult to spot your braking point, which is just before that break in the curb. And again here you can abuse the track limits or abuse the curb. This one's flat in a group 4 car, easily flat because you've just come out of a slow corner. Into the, uh, the, the hairpin here, second to last uh, corner on the circuit. I was purple on the second sector, so we're just going to come up to the line here. What is this lap going to be? On the super soft tyre, going straight to the line for the shortest run. Crossing the line to go provisionally onto pole position. Now I was the first person to to cross the line to finish my, my qualifying session, so everyone still has to finish their laps. But in the end, it was a pole position. So something of a rarity for me. I don't often get pole positions, but there we go. Uh, this race has an interesting concept here because we've got three choices of tyre. Well, actually five, but you're not going to get far on the heavy, wet or intermediate tyre. Chappers there reminding me of my duties as a bottle job, and no doubt that will happen at some point. But anyway, roll the intro. I want to share it with them. I want to see what they think. What you say? That you only meant well. Changing mag! Oh no, no! Target neutralized! So thank you to Nico Rosberg there for putting an end to Lewis Hamilton's rap career. That is no longer a threat. What is a problem for us at the moment is 13 laps of Maggiore. So let's go away from the line, from pole position. A rarity for me, it must be said. But on this occasion here, we have qualified on pole, we've done we've done the deeds in the qualifying session. Let's try and capitalise fully on that as we go down towards the sweeping S bends. The beauty of Maggiore really is that you can drive it in many configurations and in both directions. It swings both ways like a fully fledged lesbian as we sweep around the S bends and then down towards what I consider to be the difficult corner of the circuit. This is one of the hardest ones. Curved entry. Uh, and it really just just kills your tyres, just kills the outside right, or the, the front right, it just absolutely murders it, which would be the left if you're going the other way around the circuit. Just looking behind there, guys battling quite heavily, which is always good to see. If you're on pole position, you want the guys behind, or in any position, you want the guys to be fighting to give you that breathing space to, to pull away a little bit easier. As we come up into the penultimate turn, a uh, very sharp hairpin here, great overtaking opportunity on this lap and, and I say again this this track really does flow very well in both directions it's always hard to say which is the best direction to go around uh, Maggiore 
as uh, I think both directions do make for good good racing. Into turn one, just look for the crossover on the on the white line going across the track. That's a good breaking point for turn one, and we've got in there nicely. Gap around about a second or just under. Going to try and break that toe. Once they're in about half a second of range, then they're going to be getting sucked along. Does that a little bit harder than before? So that's the magic area. The guy behind is always looking to get within, and it's up to you as the, the leading driver to try to pull out of that range and stop the slipstream wherever possible, just giving them free time if, if they're within, within that range. So down towards the tricky corner again, and it's okay on the early laps because we have grip. As the race progresses and our tyres begin to die, then that corner will become ever more difficult. We go over the crest now, Chappers just behind us started fourth, immediately up to second. Now something to, to, uh, to consider here is the tyre strategy. In fact, this season of, of FIA is entirely really about the tyres, because the fuel, you see there, I've got 14 laps of fuel remaining, and it's only a 13 lap race. So fuel is just never something you have to really consider here in these races. It's all about the tyre strategy, and of course with the three compounds available, that does really spice up the action. And we don't know at this point here what people are using. I'm, I've gone for the super. I've gone for the soft, sorry. And we, we just absolutely do not have a clue what people behind are using. So if someone comes flying past, and you know just drives away, there's a good chance they're using a soft tyre, or I'm just driving badly. And we uh, we move on to lap four. So a little bit further into the race, the gap is about the same. Fairly static for these first four laps. I'm still in the lead. Still controlling the race from the front. Chappers behind, 0.6 the gap, so fairly close, not quite within sucking range, but uh, he'll be looking to get within that in the next lap, you would have thought. An ultimate turn done, into the final turn, make sure we use the curve on the inside, Move on to the main straight, and just checking behind here, he's actually dipped into the pit lane, he was on the super soft tyre, which is actually very interesting to note, so I, I was thinking that he would be on the, on the same tyre, Qualifying times weren't too dissimilar, and in the race our pace was actually very similar. But you couldn't quite make it work uh, completely, as uh, maybe by lap three or four the, the super soft really just begins to degrade very quickly, and you just lose all the performance. You really do have to make the most of it on the early laps, and then uh, as they begin to degrade, you just you're just going to be worse off than anyone with the harder tyres. And at this point here, I'm still trying to consider what people behind are on. We have a guy full turtle here, the Frenchman in the Scirocco. He's actually slowly reeling me in at this point of the race. Uh, my guess would be on, he's on the medium, or he's also on the soft, but just managing the tyre a little bit better. It's actually hard, quite hard to tell, um, because this game it has weird ways with the tyres. Sometimes people can just make a softer tyre last longer than I can on a harder tyre. I don't quite know what it is. I think there is a little bit of a disadvantage on the controller. Um, this is one thing I've noticed that it's very hard on the controller to be completely smooth with your inputs. And you know, when when tire strategy isn't really a, a factor, then it's not so bad. But when when tires are very much an important integral part of the race, then it can be quite difficult. I'm actually going to bail into the pit lane and switch over to the medium compound. I felt as though the the grip was really diminishing very quickly, like worryingly quickly at the end of that stint. Deciding then to, to shift over to the medium, I've just done a five lap stint there on the softs and look to do an eight lap stint now on the medium to see me through to the end of the race. I don't want to have to come into the pits again. This is uh, on board with Chappers, so this guy went in at the end of lap number four, uh, just over a lap ago, and he was right on my tail. Uh, a result there, a net result really of him losing out, you see, he was actually right on my tail before he came into the pit lane, like about half a second behind. And now, in just over a second, and the main downside really, he has traffic in between. So there's a Spaniard here in the Corvette. As I go for a move up the inside, ooh, sketchy move that, not the cleanest. I do feel as though I was meeting the apex, and the other guy came across, but at the same time I was the one overtaking, and it wasn't the cleanest move. So let me know your thoughts on that one. I don't think it was actually the best move at all from myself, but I've seen a lot worse. So this is now again with the the, uh, the Cayman behind. Chappers just losing out here. 
Uh, and this is the main downside of pitting early is that you come out in traffic, you come out behind people who are technically slower than you and you're going to lose time. Even if you lose a second, that can be crucial at the end of the race. And you actually made a mistake there going into the hairpin just having to bail out of the move. This is lap number seven, so progressing a little bit deeper into the race. I've had a couple of laps on these tyres. There's still many more left to go uh, once we come round the corner here and uh, end lap, uh, lap number seven. Here's Full Turtle. That's Full Turtle into the pit lane. He was on the soft tyres we see at the left hand side of the screen. The rest of the guys go into the pit lane as well. So these guys opting to have the better tyre strategy for the second half of the race. There goes Super GT back into the lead. And the gap here is going to settle down around about two and a half seconds or three seconds. Two and a half seconds, there we are. And the gap isn't as big as I perhaps would have liked. Uh, let's not forget that I am on the medium, so I wouldn't have been gaining too much. That is uh, the result of the undercut though. Gone in a lot earlier, whilst the other guys are on worse tyres than I'm, I'm the one gaining. But now the tables are going to really turn because, well, A, I'm going to drift really wide, just completely misjudge that turn. And B, uh, these guys have softer tyres and, uh, and, and they've pitted more recently, so the tyres are going to be more fresh. So ready, you see just how close this is. I've, I've let a two and a half second gap diminish already down to barely a second or less than a second. And this is uh, it's going to set up quite a tense battle from here to the end because I've still got quite a lot of laps left. And I have, I'm going to have to defend because this Scirocco is looking quick. It's on uh, what I think are softer tyres. I, I believe he'll probably be on the soft again. He made seven laps work. Uh, before so he could probably make six laps work on the same tyre. So he's on the soft, I'm on the medium. Uh, my, my mediums are older and uh, that, that Scirocco does look very planted on the way out of turn so I'm going to have to be very very careful with you know him overtaking on the way in and on the way out. It can be, uh, can be either way. Uh, not quite defending into turn one. See just how close he is though. Gets really good traction off the turn and couldn't quite match him. He's looking up the inside and he thinks better of it. Maybe a very sensible decision. I think he knows that he's, he's, got, he's on the front foot. He's got time here. There's, uh, you know, there's still like five laps after this one. So he, he can bide his time, really. He doesn't have to push right now. I mean, you, you can see just how close he gets on the exit of the S-Bends. I'm going to go for a medium line here. Go defensive down the, down the centre of the road. And on the way out... Uh, just a slight misjudgment. I think he kind of moved over to the left a little bit too late. He had the momentum. I think he wanted to get all the slip for him he could and then pull to the left. But just misjudged it slightly. And just run a tiny bit into the back of my car. Not that it really affected In fact, it helped me because it, it, you know, he basically boosted me. Uh, through this, through this right-hander, not as close as he was before. Not needing to defend this time around as a result. You can see just how close he is though right on my tail, putting the pressure right on and have to soak this up for another couple of laps until the end of the race and you can see just how close he is again into the slipstream, the gap uh, uh, under 0.3 definitely within range for a move, I'm going to go you see here, just going to the middle of the circuit, so make him go def uh, make him go the long way round on the way out again, just looking for the cutback, he wasn't quite there, I kind of held a nice line on the centre of the track and he was looking for that good run on the way out and my car was just basically in the way. And that's going to give me uh, a margin, 0.9 uh, on lap 10 here. It's going to get harder and harder to defend. This guy is actually very, very quick indeed. And Shiroku seems to be really working for him, and he's driving quite well. So I'm going to have to really have my work cut out if I want to stay ahead. The gap increasing there as a result of that contact on the apex of turn number one. So that's only going to give me some respite for only a short amount of time is going to no doubt be right on back on my tail before I know it the gap already 0.7 he's reeling me back in quite slowly but, but, but surely looking behind on the map the guy in third not too far behind he could pick up the pieces should anything bad happen but the guys in fourth and fifth are a little bit further back than that a couple of seconds behind so the battle here for the lead quite uh, quite quite open and raging between the two of us as he goes up the inside Capitalises on the mistake I make, going a little bit too deep on the brakes into the hairpin. He nips up the inside. It's a really good move to capitalise on that mistake, and he's through into first place. Uh, just flashing the, the hazard lights there at me. If I want to make 
uh, any attempt to win this race, I think I need to do it on this lap. I need to reply as soon as possible. Uh, the longer the race goes on, the worse my tyres are going to get, and the harder it will be to go for that pass. You see just how good the traction is on that uh, Scirocco coming out of the turn. Not much I can really do to reply to that. I'm really driving very well is this guy up ahead. And you see as we flash forward through the lap, it's really not going my way. You see just how much he's beginning to pull away from me. And I think that's probably the race over in terms of race victory. Unless he does something very, very silly, gets himself a penalty. Or gets murdered by a backmarker. Actually, that's impossible. You can't even get murdered by backmarkers anymore. Because they're all ghosted, of course. So, I don't think that's quite going to happen now. You see him just sliding through the final turn. Looking at the... Uh, the telemetry here turns out that he was on the soft tyre as expected I'm on the medium a couple of guys behind me on the medium some there on the super soft which I don't think was the right strategy for this race ultimately uh, I still think it's a fairly decent performance to come through in second uh, to qualify first come through in second that that um, Scirocco just was so fast I just could not keep up with it I don't think I could have defended for much longer and um, it would have got harder and harder to defend as well. You can see just how bad the grip is. Or maybe I went in one lap too early, but then again, my, my tyres were very, very well worn at the end of the first stint. At the end of the race, full turtle, going to come through to win the race. I had a bit of pressure from behind, but just about managed to keep second. It's crossing the line to get a decent result there. Not too bad. Obviously, it's disappointing to lose the lead when you qualify on pole but when you when you're on pole you know you can only go backwards or stay the same uh, not too bad a result quite happy with that ultimately so not not too many shadow realm entries you know in today's race but um, we did have the lewis hamilton meme so you know swings and roundabouts that is it for today do let me know your thoughts as always i hope you enjoyed the video i shall see you in the next one thank you as always for the support much love my friends and subscribers see you in the next one goodbye Listen.